All right guys, so a quick video on electric water heaters. First thing you wanna do when you come up to a water heater, take a look at the data plate and take a picture of it. Assess the capacity of the unit as well as the manufacturer through that. The type of unit. The next thing we're gonna do is, is identify what type of power source the water heater is. If it's electric like this one or if it's gas. Electric will have a service line entering at the top of the uh, water heater and it will have two element covers at the top and the bottom. A gas one will have a flue pipe at the top. It will also have a combustion chamber with a, a flame cover and a valve, everything outside of the base of the, the water heater. That's all about the casing. Next thing we're going to look at is the casing unit. We're going to look for any previous signs of rust around our unions, around our penetrations of the elements, uh, our inlet, our outlet, our TPRV valve. We're going to look at uh, previous leaks around the unions of the thermal expansion tank, our valves, and so forth. If it has a jacket on it, we do have a comment in our, uh, in our report software talking about the limitations of our visual inspection with an insulation jacket. Alright, now I'm going to talk about the disconnect in the ground in three, two. The next thing we're going to look for on an on electric water heater is our disconnect. We don't have one here on this unit. We need to have one either at the unit or within, or it needs to be within side of the electrical panel. In this case, it is within side of the electrical panel. It's right next to it. So we don't have to have one right here, but we want to make sure we have one and then take a picture of the disconnect and put it in our report. We also want to take a look at our visible exposed grounding screw at the top of the electric water heater and make sure that we have uh, bare copper wire coming out of our um, access cover right here to ensure that the casing is grounded as well. Now the service line says. You conduit? I should have said that. I guess that's what that says. Service. Service. Oh, yeah. Next thing we're going to want to look at is our service line. Make sure it's in conduit if it's susceptible to damage. If it's in a closet tucked away, there's no chance of being stored anywhere. You might not necessarily have to call it out, but if it looks like it could be easily snagged or, or something stored fall on it, then we'll want to make sure it's in conduit. Next one is about the pan and wall surrounding in three, two. Anytime we have a water heater surrounded by finished surfaces like sheetrock, baseboards, things like that, we're going to want to make sure we have a pan. If it's in a garage and it's around, um, it's near a slab where there's not going to be any damage on finished surfaces or it has a gap where there won't be any damage done to it, then it does not need a pan. Or if it's in an unfinished basement, it does not need a pan. Oftentimes, if it has had previous issues or like the previous water heater leaking, you'll look at the baseboards and the sheetrock surrounding the water heater and you'll see either moisture absorption on the base of the wall or you'll see fungal growth behind it because it's oftentimes very hard to clean behind there. So always make sure you take a look around the entire water heater for evidence of previous issues and call that out as needed. All right, now I'll talk about expansion tanks and expansion <clears throat> valves in three, two, Next thing, we're going to look for the thermal expansion tank on a closed loop system. If it's an open loop system like a well, it does not need a thermal expansion tank. That water can just expand and go right back into the coal supply line. There's no pressure or there's no um, backflow prevention valve on that open loop system. So closed loop systems, public water, need to have a tank or a thermal expansion valve. If you don't see a tank, look for a valve. Sometimes they're hard to find. They can either be at the top of the unit on the coal supply line or there's sometimes underneath kitchen sinks, bathroom sinks. So don't necessarily call it out if you don't see it here. Make sure you look through the entire home as well before you call it out missing. All right, now I've talked about the um, TPR drain line <clears throat> material being sloped up. And three, two, Next thing we're going to look for is our TPRV drain pipe. It can be anything but PVC. Make sure it's not a bright white color. You can also look at the stamp on the piping if it's visible and not painted over. Um, you can look for that Schedule 40 PVC uh, stamp that would have to identify it as PVC. Typically it's a little bit uh, wider diameter as well than CPVC. Um, it can also be copper and PEX. Uh, the other thing we call out a lot is if that pipe is sloped up, it needs to have a drain valve to allow the water to be periodically drained out. That's just a maintenance procedure. That way that sediment won't continually 
uh, fill up until it seals off the drain pipe and then becomes a sealed combustion chamber or a bomb and that would just kind of um, make the valve, the pop-off valve obsolete at that point. That's what its job is to do and that would seal off its, its um, pipe. So. Now the pressure. Three, Hold on. Go, come back and then look at the camera. Three, two, one. Next thing we're going to do is check the water pressure at the at the tank. I really like to get it at the cold supply line at the laundry uh, cold supply if I can. If that's hooked up to a washer, then the next place I try to get it from is the water heater. Um, we just take our pressure reducing, or our, I'm sorry, our pressure gauge, come down here at the base of it, screw it on. And then, depending on if it's a brass connector or a plastic one, you can either screw it to really to open it up, or you can take your flathead and open up that brass valve. If you um, take it off and, it, and close it back, and it starts to leak, make sure you carry around some of these hose caps that should be provided to you. That way, we can put it on there, still call it out, and not have any damage um, caused for the homeowner and, and prevents issues there. So um, make sure you get a picture of the pressure gauge and put that pressure into the report as well for your client. All right, and now I'll just do a, a closing statement on electric water heater. Three, two. So that's electric water heaters. That's not overly technical or exhaustive. You'll have other training videos talking about the insides of it and how they work, but those are some of the common things that we often see with electric water heaters with Avalon and comments that we put in our report on a daily basis. Next, we'll go to gas water heaters.